Hey guys, welcome to the channel and what we are going to talk about today is five best soundbars that you can buy in the price range of 30,000 rupees, under 30,000 rupees and the soundbars I'm recommending are between 17,000 rupees and 30,000 rupees. Now one important disclaimer is I have either reviewed these soundbars or have experienced them in some form or the other either at an offline store or at a friend's house before I'm actually recommending this to you and wherever I've experienced it, I've tried to experience it with content that I would normally watch at home in a home-like environment so that I can get the best possible judgment for these soundbars. I am not going to talk a lot about the specs because you can check out the specs on the official website or on Amazon where this is available or even at an offline store. What I am going to talk about is the experience of using these soundbars and some of the pros and the cons that you can expect when you purchase it. So let's get started. This list is in no particular order. It's in the order of price as on Amazon from the uh, cheapest to the most expensive one starting at about 17,000 rupees going all the way up to 30,000 rupees and these are my personal picks because I've used these soundbars and if there are others that you think are great for this price point let me know in the comment section below. So let's get started with the first one. Now the first one that I want to talk about is the Sony HT-S20R. This is a great entry level soundbar for someone that has a budget TV especially that's 43 or 50 or even 55 inches in the budget segment and they're looking to enhance the audio uh, from their TV. Now the great thing about the soundbar is it's a plug and play setup but it's completely wired and you get a proper 5.1 experience. So you have a center uh, system which is the center channel, the left channel and the right channel all in this compact soundbar that actually fits perfectly under a 43 inch TV and it has a subwoofer and two rare speakers for the surround effects. The only catch is that this entire system is wired and all the wiring goes into the subwoofer. So if you are going to connect it, you have to ensure that your living room or your entertainment room, wherever you're putting up the soundbar has enough space to actually do good wiring management for the rare speakers all the way up to the subwoofer. The speakers that come in the box are really, really long. I don't think I've ever encountered a scenario where they were short for my use. And I sat all the way up to 10, 12, even sometimes 15 feet away from the TV. Now, a great experience would be if the surround speakers could be at ear height facing you. That would give you the best experience from a system like this. And all the connectivity options are behind the subwoofer. So know that if you want to place the subwoofer slightly away from your television that might not be convenient because the subwoofer has the HDMI port, the auxiliary input and the optical input. Doesn't come with an HDMI cable in the box so you will have to purchase that separately. It comes with an audio cable only. Speaking of the sound output, it's actually very good especially if you have dedicated 5.1 content. If you're going to listen to music or something like watch regular TV, there are times when all the sound output comes from all the five speakers which may not necessarily be the best experience but yes if you are watching content that's mastered for a surround sound experience and you will get those bikes flying all around you in an action movie for example from the surround speakers giving you a more immersive experience. If I have one con apart from the connectivity options being in the subwoofer, one other con I have is that the center left and right channel up front aren't very far apart so let's say if there's a motorcycle that's swishing from the left to the right of the screen and Mission Impossible that effect of going from left to right that channel separation isn't the best from the front speakers but that's a minor gripe for what is otherwise a great entry-level 5.1 home theater with wired connectivity all throughout. Next up we have the JBL Bar 2.1 and this is a no-nonsense 2.1 system. You get an HDMI cable in the box, you have a bunch of connectivity options for this one such as HDMI ARC, optical connectivity and Bluetooth and it has a nice 6.5 inch subwoofer to give you really really good bass. This is the best upgrade for your TV if you're looking for cleaner sound when watching movies and playing games for good bass response and for an overall immersive experience with very good dynamic range because if you are watching a movie like let's say a quiet place where you have a lot of silence for some time and then all of a sudden a great background score with some action on the screen, some characters screaming, that range that you will get is a truly immersive experience on this soundbar. It is one of the best no-nonsense soundbars when it comes to watching movies and playing games with a host of connectivity options and of course a pretty good remote control as well. So if there's one soundbar that you want under about 20,000 rupees, I think this sells for about 19,000 rupees as of recording this video, that you can just plug and play and really enjoy content on your TV, then you should definitely consider the JBL Bar 2.1. Next up, and we're getting into slightly complicated technology territory out here, is the Samsung HWQ600B. And for the rest of this video, we're just going to call this a Samsung soundbar. Now, this soundbar comes with a host of features and it's probably one of the most feature-rich soundbars in this list. Uh, for starters, it's a 3.1.2 soundbar, which means it has three front-firing drivers, 
two upward firing drivers for a surround sound experience and of course the subwoofer that connects to it. Now, like another soundbar that we're going to talk about later in this video, the Sony HD S40R, this Samsung uh, soundbar can be upgraded to support rare speakers, but the rare speakers are connected to each other and one of the speakers has to be connected to a power outlet, so it, ex it isn't exactly a truly wireless 5.1 setup, but it is a fairly robust, it is a fairly good 5.1 setup if you ever decide to upgrade it in the future. Now, one of the things to note is that this soundbar also supports Q-Symphony, which means that if you have a Samsung Samsung TV, some compatible Samsung TVs will allow you to use the Samsung TV speakers in addition to the soundbar speakers so that you get quite a holistic surround sound uh, experience and of course exploit the TV speakers as well. Another great option which is available on this soundbar, which is available on the soundbar we'll recommend closer to 30,000 rupees, which is a Yamaha. This Samsung also comes with an additional HDMI port with 4K HDR10 Plus pass-through. So if you have a 4K TV, you have the EARC connected to the TV and you have, let's say, a set-top box or a streaming stick that you want to connect, you don't have to go all the way to the back of the TV. You can just use the port in the soundbar to connect it and it's going to give you a great experience, including an additional port. For connectivity options, it has, like I said, HDMI pass-through and it also comes with optical and Bluetooth, but it does not have Wi-Fi. So if you're looking to connect this to the internet, it doesn't, but it comes with a really nice uh, remote control as well, which works great if you have a Samsung TV. Moving on to the next one, this is the Sony HD S40R. Now the performance is slightly better than the S20R that we spoke about earlier and the use case is almost the same. This one is also a 5.1 system where the center left right channel is the same as the S20R. But the biggest thing is that it comes with wireless rare speakers and by wireless, I mean that you don't have to connect the rare speakers to the subwoofer with wires traveling through your living room like I said with the S20R. With the S40R, you get the small receiver box that connects both the rear speakers to via a wire. So you'll have a speaker from uh, the left uh, and the right channel, both of them going into this little box which connects to the power. So while the two rear speakers are connected to this little power box that is going into a wall socket, they aren't connected to the front speakers which gives you a lot more flexibility on where to face them. Again, like I said, if you are looking for a great surround sound experience, the, the surround speaker should be facing your ears at ear height at a relative distance. Because these are Sony's more budget systems, they should be no more than six to eight feet away from you on each side for a great experience. Anything further than that and you might feel the audio is too far or a bit of a delay or, you know, uh, some, so, sometimes it may not feel like the best experience. Six to eight feet away from you is the best experience that I would recommend. The S40R, for the slightly more power, the slight more convenience of the wireless rear speakers compared to the S20R is a totally worth it upgrade if you can afford it. But if you can't and you are looking for a surround sound experience, then the S20R is equally good. Last but not least, under 30,000 rupees, I would like to recommend the Yamaha YS209. And before we go into the details of this soundbar, I have actually reviewed it after using it for a couple of years and you can check out that review on the channel. And if you don't know about it, then that's probably because you're not subscribed, so you may want to subscribe and stay tuned for more reviews, tips and listers like this one. Okay, so the Yamaha YS209 is a great 2.1 soundbar. It's the closest to the 30,000 rupee price point and it has a few very important things going for it. Just like the Samsung, it has a 4K pass-through via an HDMI port, an additional port in addition to the ARC port that it has. It supports HDR10 only and not 10 plus like the Samsung one does, but that's okay. It has optical as well, but this soundbar has a great feature is that it connects to the Wi-Fi, which means it gets regular updates. I've gotten a lot of updates in the time that I've owned this soundbar. It also comes with Alexa built-in in case you want an, a voice assistant as a part of it. And it also comes with a great app that you can use as a remote control in case you lose the remote control. So it does have a few advantages over the other speakers in uh, this list that we've spoken about. But nonetheless, the sound output from this soundbar is actually very, very, very good. I mean, the bass is more neutral. When it comes to the soundbars from Samsung and from Sony, you might find that the bass is slightly more overpowering and that's because the Indian Indian audience is kind of used to having slightly louder bass but I think if you're someone that's looking for a soundbar with good neutral bass at zero and then you can bump it up bases your requirements then you can consider the Yamaha because it does give you a lot of flexibility and controls just like all the other soundbars on this list you have a variety of board modes from music to movies to TV voice enhancements etc and 
In addition to all of those, I think the ability to connect to the internet, the voice controls, the extra HDMI ports, and the overall sound output from the Yamaha is just very, very good. That's why it demands a slightly more premium above these other soundbars. Don't get me wrong, the other soundbars are also a pretty good bang for the buck when you consider the price they are available at along with the features that they offer, especially the Samsung one on this list. But the Yamaha is a true standout if you really enjoy watching movies and playing games. You can go check out my review for the details. So there you have it guys, that was my list of 5 soundbars that I'd like to recommend under 30,000 rupees, between 17,000 rupees and 30,000 rupees to be more precise. As always, you can let us know what you thought of this video in the comment section below. And for more from the world of home entertainment, you can subscribe to the channel. We will catch you in another video. It's goodbye for now.